free. Mr. Bergeron's on. Don't forget the popcorn, Frank. Coming, dear. So that was a piece of, I think, a piece, a part of all of this. So we explained the situation, high functioning, we st and the judge was very familiar with Jimmo. As we discussed the Jimmo, um, he was very familiar with the guidelines, with, the n with everything that has come out, um, and he said, thank you very much. And it was interesting, the attorney from Fallon was very quiet. He did not question a lot. As I think it's... As soon as Jimmo was brought up, he became very quiet. But one of the biggest things is this sister, out of her own pocket, paid privately to keep him on rehab because he had been denied, because she was trying desperately to get him back into an acute rehab setting to have his shoulder fixed. She went, took him out and took him to a private um, physical physiatrist who was able to determine that he absolutely could improve and he, he needed acute rehab. Fallon declined that because it wasn't one of their doctors. So she went and got another. And then she actually went to the neurologist who said he did not have a stroke and that he never had his torn rotator cuff fixed and that they missed the doctor's order for this. So all of these things had come into play and we knew going in that the nursing home was very upset and they did not feel they did anything other than deny him the benefits because they didn't think he could progress. The judge, I think one of the biggest things is he wanted to know how much money she spent privately. And it came out to about $7,000 and she only had PT coming in Beaumont, I shouldn't say that, but the, <laughs> home, the nursing home was doing rehab three times a week. She brought in physical therapy twice a week, so he was getting a five-day schedule. But the facilities therapist said, you, she's just making him tired and he can't function for us. So it was kind of a controversy all the way down. But we did win the appeal. The good news is we won the appeal. Well, that's how we, that's felt. How we felt. We were <laughs> so excited um, that the administration, right <laughs> that the we facility, the that they had, the, the deny, well, they he should never have, have come, come off, off field service. That was our fight. And that was the answer. We got a beautiful letter. Three page came. letter and it was really the, the the family member got it and scanned it and say you know sent it to us and we were very excited. Now what do you do? Okay. Now we thought this is terrific. This client can now go back on skilled therapy. Wrong. The the that was um, something that we learned very quickly. Because of the gap in time now it's been cl uh, over a oh, year. Yeah since the gentleman had stopped his rehab. skill therapy and never received any therapy, of course he has not made any progress and you can't go back in time. He's actually declined. He's actually declined over the year. So the win was for cash, which it feels good to get she the cash, but it doesn't, she hasn't gotten the cash yet, that's a whole other. But the win was for the cash, but you can't go back in time to go back and say get the skilled therapy so the gentleman is still in the facility now now in a wheelchair where he was walking prior to this so it's it feel, it's a it's a double edged sword with these wins i will also say that linda and i decided that we were going to find out push um, it, a push it a little bit further so He's we call disabled. Uh, i was going to say the medicare yeah, advocacy right. we call the medicare advocacy in washington dc to see what we could do, we the Medicare know Advocacy Project, which is their main office is in Connecticut, also have lawyers in D.C. because they do a lot of stuff yeah. there. Right. There are lawyers in both places. Yeah, Arthur helped us with all of that, and we were like, okay, so where do we go with this? You know, it's not making us feel any better now that we realize we didn't, we, we won, but we didn't. The client is still lost. So we spoke to this wonderful attorney um, in Washington, D.C., who absolutely said, you are right. These judges many of times 
are deciding in favor of the client, in favor of the, the senior, that benefits were denied and terminated too early. However, because of the gap in time, because this process is taking so long, th there's nothing you Medicaid can do. You can't go back. Do that. So there is now the good news is there's another class action suit um, going on um, with, the, with all of these mm -hmm. attorneys looking to bring down that period of time that the ALJ has to hear cases within 90 days. And I don't know when this is, how this is going to come uh, play itself out, when we're going to hear if this actually comes to fruition in terms of a 90 day. But that would help seniors because if we have 90 days, you don't lose as much ground in physical and therapy as you do in a year told plus. Us that you need to win the first or second appeal. Mm -hmm. And he said those are the key ones. And unfortunately, I don't know about everybody else. We don't get called in until they get denied. And unfortunately, you've already lost the first one, if not the second one. So we were really kind of down with this whole process because this sister is just amazing. And she went to Whittier, and she got a physician that she had known from before who had taken care of him years before in an accident, and he regained everything back. And he was willing if they could get an evaluation and have him admit it to see if they could put him on even the outpatient program. Unfortunately, the same rehab team did the evaluation who sent the letter saying he is not rehab material, he's on a maintenance program, he's not ambulating, and so the whole thing got declined. But we haven't stopped yet. We're going to try to go the disability um, <laughs> council because technically there was a lawsuit a long time ago regarding handicapped people placed in long-term care without getting proper treatment. And um, he is a brain injury. From it's from birth. And I, I think maybe they may help with this class action suit. It's the, I don't remember. It, it, she had the whole name and number. We called <laughs> AD, A to dis Disabled. Yeah, there is one. Anyway, we're trying to get that end of it and working with the brain injury. Mm -hmm. It issue was, was uh, rotator cuff injury. Well, I think he would have progressed in rehab. The reason they took him off rehab is he couldn't handle the walk or the right. walk. You're absolutely right, Sally, because they thought he had a and stroke. And so he for had all of us, for all of us to be very cognizant that it's a correct diagnosis. But I'll, I'll be honest with you. To the rehab because mm -hmm. I think that's really important and the fact that something can follow you right through to the end. But I honestly think that the appeal was probably won on the stipulation that Fallon never issued a denial. It was, but there because there were so many pieces that I think that one little thing plus bringing up Jimmo was a big thing because the attorney totally stopped. The judge got right into it and said, was he put on maintenance? No, he wasn't. You know, and did, did he deteriorate? Yes, he did. I will also say that uh, we asked the judge, Linda and I were f on the phone together, like, what can we do differently? If we had to do this case right. differently, mm -hmm. what, would, what would you recommend um, for Linda and I to do going forward if we're ever in this situation? And he was the one that said, you need to, just what you did, Sue, make copies of the Jimmo legislation, bring it to the appeal, um, you know, you've got to win, he said, but, I, but he also was very honest and said, there are so many denials on the first and second. He said they are extremely hard to win. He was not very optimistic or encouraging when we kept saying, anything else you can come up with because we're not finding winning these appeals 
easily and he said you just have to have your documentation remind them about the gymo and they've had a lot of complaints on and, it and and, and by the way you and by the way you saw the you saw the appeals period so even if you successfully you compress the, the ALJ piece of this there were three pieces before that mm -hmm. right the, and the, you add those numbers up and they're about a year before you even are appealing to the ALJ right so but but that, that's why I guess you know one of the one of the <coughs> it would appear that that these cases may present this kind of unique need for ex for an expedited process that kind of goes all the way through the system because you've got these people who are otherwise completely trapped. Yes, yes. If the whole if the whole point of this yeah. right is not to get them better, but that you've got pa patients that are either that are going to deteriorate unless they've got this kind of care, then by the time you've got the win, the patient's already deteriorated and the services haven't been provided. Or maybe, as a regulatory matter, there needs to be something that says, while it, wouldn't, it may not last forever, that you'd have something akin to what happens at the nursing homes when, you, when there's an appeal and, there's a, and you ha they have to keep providing the services mm -hmm. till they lose the appeal, as opposed to not providing the services because, because you can't take it back but once you haven't provided those services. Now we realize there, there are financial implications to that, yes. right? But there's a regulatory way to be trying to deal with some of these things, and I don't know the answer to that. I just know that I now have to make my boat. Oh, how sad. Okay. How sad. Thank you very, very much, by the way. I hope this was helpful. <laughs>